Hello, everyone, and welcome to the last podcast for season 11. We are doing a special both live podcast, and we're also doing the team of the season for Super League Reveal. Tonight, we're running deep in the panelists. We have Exile. Hello. We also have Dorsey. Hello. We have King Turilich. Asalaamu Alaikum. And we have Kazban. Hola, como esta? All right, boys, tonight's the night for Super League. We're revealing all of the starters first, and then we're going to do in the bench, and then also, very briefly, people who can, had consideration, and then people who also received votes. Um, so anything before we get started from you guys? Uh, just want to shout out the entire league. Um, every season, and I don't just say this, but every season that legitimately gets stupidly hard to vote. And I want to vote for more people than I can. And that's because you guys are doing a good job putting your stats in. That's because you guys are doing a good job playing and you're making it competitive and difficult. So good job to everyone. Yeah, I, I do want to say this is my third team of the season that I picked. And it was by far the hardest. Uh, had to sit there, pen and paper, rack a brain around it. And, you know, uh, kind of like Darcy said, I wish we could have picked more people. Um, there's a lot of people that aren't going to be here that are worthy of team of the season and other types of awards for sure. All right. Well, without further ado, we will reveal the first card of the night, which is going to be the starting keeper for this team of the season. And it is none other than Phil the fish. Congratulations to the, the goat over there. 38 games played, 145 saves, 21 clean sheets, 11 passing points, and only 25 goals against. What stats did really stood out to you guys? For me, it was the fact that not only did he blast away the old clean sheet record that just got set last year by strikers with 21, um, he also led the league in saves. 145 isn't the highest that there's ever been, but he led the league in saves and clean sheets, and had five man of the matches. And if you saw the final game in Super Cup against Inter, um, didn't single-handedly win them that game, but he kept them in it. And I mean, this is six straight team of the season. I mean, what else can you say about the guy at this point? Yeah, for me, it was definitely... Um, it was the man of the matches, the saves, and the goal assist, the goals against together. Uh, usually, when you see a, a keeper with that many saves, it's followed by a lot of goals against, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and last season, like, the top keepers in the leagues didn't have a lot of goals against, but they also didn't have a lot of saves. Um, and, you know, and then getting the five man of the matches, that shows you where his team rated him with that with that type of defense sitting right in front of him to still pull off that many man of the matches. Uh, it shows you where Koof held him, you know, in his mind and in, in his team and how he felt about him. Yeah, not only did he lead, lead the league in saves for Super League, but also uh, Cups. You know, he had 40 in Cups, which isn't displayed here. Um, so he led both in Super League and in Cup competitions. Uh, so all around great season for Phil. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's just fucking annoying, honestly, to play against. Like, especially <laughs> when he's in net. It just gets so difficult to score on him at times. So it's well-deserved. Plus, you know, the accolades of the team of the week, one and two. Him, I mean, I know Inter are helping him to an extent too, but the semis, you know, both cup and royal semis, all this stuff is, you know, it just just adds to his pedigree. So, it was to me, it wasn't an easy choice, but it wasn't a hard choice either way. So, congrats to Phil. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, that defense wouldn't have broken that clean sheet record. I didn't think that clean sheet record was going to go down, and for them to break it the very next season, uh, I think he was a huge part of that. And I think we see that with all those saves. Uh, but we got to keep it rolling here. We got a full starting 11. Uh, next up is the first center back in the back line, and it is none other than Exiles X Footy. So, Footy, congratulations on your team this season. 29 games played, 77 interceptions, 11 tackles, 95 possessions won, and 14 clean sheets. Uh, what stood out to you from his stat line? Uh, Exile, you had probably have the most experience with him personally because he plays next to you. Exile. You're still muted, buddy. Unlock. 
There you yeah, go. I, I saw that. That's my fault. Uh, actually, to be honest with you, um, it, it's not one stat that that stands out for Fut for me. Um, it's when I'm playing next to him, he makes my job incredibly easy. Um, he's the only reason why I'm I did anything this season with a dam. Um, but I mean, frankly, to have him having only played 29 games and still put up the kind of numbers he did, um, it's, it speaks to how, how good he is and how well he anchors a defense. Yeah, I think for me looking at it, he, uh, when he was in the games, they conceded 23 and 29 games that he played. Um, I think overall you guys conceded around 40, roughly. Um, so it shows you they conceded almost as many games without him as they did with him, which I think is a true mark of a team of season players that when you're not there, your team, you know, your results show it. And then the team also just feels that their impact of his loss. And I know that when he was uh, moving to Denmark and kind of wasn't available for a couple game days that I know Atlanta, I think they had some issues. And so, you know, showing that he, you know, I think he came around and he played in that PCN Cup final, helped him get some silverware. So his, he just had a huge impact on that team all season. Yeah, I think that's the best recognition of someone's talent. When he's not there, how does that defense hold up? And is a little bit different story from then when he was there. And then when he moved, I think he moved all the way to Denmark and had some connection issues. He saw the defense kind of take a step back, not you know a full step back, but at least a step back from what it was. Uh, so it, it's nice to see him get up there. He had two great seasons in a row. I think he made team of the season last season as well. So he's making a habit of this. And uh, I want to chime in here also. I mean, when you play 29 games and 14 of them are clean sheets, it's a pretty good record in the first place. And and there are going to be some guys who maybe feel hard done. Um, this was a really difficult decision to get all these awesome center backs that play in these three backs for us uh, in our league. Trying to fit them into a, a teamless season is really difficult. Um, but we tried to stay fair to the guys who played in the middle, uh, who aren't touching the ball as much, who aren't there to win the ball back immediately on the wings or something like that. But they really hold their entire back line together, and they win a lot of headers, and they get the ball cleared as, as best as they can. Um, it's probably most usually your best defender that plays in the middle. And um, for Footy to stand out like this with only 29 games played is, is really uh, astounding. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we do have a, a full 11. I'll keep saying that. <laughs> so we got to move on to the next one. Uh, it comes from actually a mid-table uh, team, surprisingly enough, but it's none other than Slip Kid from Lyon. Had a great season, 38 games played, 96 interceptions, 43 tackles, and a staggering 170 possessions won. I think without him, they're going to really fall down from that. I think it was ninth spot overall. Yeah, um, slip kid for me. Uh, you know, when I was sitting there and and making my decision on the center backs, uh, I was kind of blown away at, you know, how good his stats were to be on a mid table team. Um, I think I was expecting to see more goals against. It's uh, it's not put there, but um, you know, usually when you see a mid table team, you kind of see a lot more goals against. But um, and then to have that many possessions won. You know, he was consistent throughout the season. And I know, you know, I speak I speak to Smoke Break on a regular basis. And they had their ups and downs this season. And, you know, Slip Kid was a constant in the heart of their defense. And, uh, you know, held it together with him. So yeah. To speak on his season, uh, we have none other than Slip Kid himself. So introduce the man, the myth, the legend, the Slip Kid. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, just uh... – I feel like honestly like to just shout out all my players, all my teammates at Lyon in particular, Adam Coops, my ACB partner, uh, AJ Khan on the right side of me, who did do a uh, very good job. You know, a lot of people talk about him as a, you know, uh, a meme Lord on the discord. He's uh, he was a very reliable right back left side of me. Uh, Lichen, very, very good left back. Always handle his business. Uh, you know, shout out to all those guys, you know, as my, you know, my stats, you know, I had a good season, but those guys did a great job of holding them down a lot too. You know, we did do a job, our job the best we could. And, you know, I think uh, 
we would have liked to finish a little bit higher, you know, and I think we, you know, we could have, if we had a couple bad, you know, we had a couple bad breaks here and there, but I think we're happy that we were able to, you know, at least um, give every team we played, you know, a hundred percent. And that's what I admire the most about my team was, you know, no matter what happened, we always stuck through. So I appreciate that from all of them. That's really all I got to say. Thanks Ooh. again also to the video, um, you know, committee to for voting, you know, voting me in. I appreciate that. You know, uh, it's a, it's an honor. Thank you. One question that I know the panelists had, and I, um, I don't know who exactly posed it, but I'll reiterate it was, did it was it difficult to play center back as the team wasn't quite getting the results? You know, you you end up about mid table, and you didn't quite finish the way you wanted to. Did it, was it hard? Did it affect your play style, or you just keep on chugging along? Well, you know, as it when you play in center back, you know, especially if you're not doing good, you know, the frustration's there because you know, especially if you get like something like a zero zero draw or a one run draw, and you feel like ah, you know, we did our job, but. You know, or whatever. But the thing was, we had, you know, to work it out. And, you know, there were times where guys were maybe a little down. But, I mean, the key was to just stay put because it's a long season. And you got to just fight through those, you know, moments. You know what I'm saying? So, that's mm-hmm. all I can say. You know, that's – but I, I was glad to stay there the entire season. And uh, I think they did – you know, everybody did a good job. Everybody stayed put. And that was that was what I was appreciative of. Appreciate you know? Well, I appreciate you joining us. We've got yeah, to, thank you. to move on to your partner back there. So yeah, thanks absolutely. a lot, love. All right, thank you. All right, next on the list is from the inner as well as Phil the Fish. It is Mr. Little Perp, widely known as one of the better center backs. Uh, so panelists, what stood out from uh, his stat line that you, you found worthy of this team of the season starting position? For me, it's it's the fact that Inter had some ups and downs this season, and their defense stayed really good throughout. But it really it got better as the season went on, and I think that was partly due to both Phil and Per. But if you look at the other center backs they had, they were basically rotating like three or four guys into other two spots all season long. But Perp was the one constant. He played every game, and his counting stats aren't the most impressive of all the candidates. But I don't think anyone who's played against him and sees what Inter did all season, can argue in any way that he wasn't worthy. Um, set the new defensive clean sheet record with 21, and you know he passed well, he won the ball back, he had a few assists, he didn't lose the ball much, You know he helped them win a cup at the end. Uh, he just did everything in terms of anchoring a squad that you could ever ask for. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what you look for for these team of the season, is the people that are really the central of those type of defenses um, that, that kind of control it. Cause you know, they, they not only are playing well, but they're making sure that their people around them are playing well as, as all as well. Yeah. I mean, part for me, um, it was similar to Phil, you know, um, he was a constant in their defense throughout the season. Yeah, he put up solid numbers, always consistent. You know, every, every time I saw interplay, he was back there making last minute saves, getting the ball out, you know, and uh, his ability to play the ball out too is one of the most impressive things for me. Um, I rarely see him just smoking it up the field, you know, like some other center backs do. He's very composed. And, um, you know, 34 tackles um, is, you know, pretty good. I mean, you look at Footy, who had great stats, but he only had 11 defensive tackles. Um, 34 tackles along with the 148 possessions one. Those are those are good numbers to have together. So he was um he was all over the place and kind of all around good center back. All right. Well, moving on to our first center defensive mid, it is none other than Dorsey. Uh, had a really great season yeah. over there, uh, Dorsey. What what would you say was you know, how did you put up these stats? What, what was it like playing for AC Milan? Do you enjoy getting third place? <laughs> <laughs> third better than second because I'm tired of second. Um, I, it was fun to go back home. Um, there was another team I was close to joining, and we don't need to get, get too much into that. Uh, spare someone in here. But um, I, think, I think in the end, it just felt right. Um, it was, it's not the same group, obviously, that it was back in the day, but... There's a few familiar faces, and 
I don't know. It was a lot of fun, and you know, I got the ball back. Not in the last season, I kind of put up some crazy numbers. I was also playing for Man City side that didn't have much possession. It was sort of all on me to get the ball back. And this season, I was playing with some better players, and you know, we got a cup, which I value more than anything I won as a player. I wish we got in the league, but. Um, the, the the one thing I'm most proud of this season was setting kind of career best in terms of goals allowed per game and clean sheets because I've had seasons where I put up a lot of stats in terms of tackles and stuff like that. But if you're not keeping out goals, that doesn't really matter. So the fact that I was able to, you know, I think Milan, we conceded like 24 or 25 goals, something like that over the course of the season, one of the best marks. That's really what I was most proud of this season. Yeah, and for me, man, as I already mentioned in the when we did the little manager reviews, you're so annoying to play against. Like it's just, he's everywhere. It's like he's left, right, middle. He's he's just everywhere. And so, and I would love to have you at Spurs, you know, at that time. But stuff did happen. But it was just you're just everywhere. And I think that's why you deserve this award more than more than a few others to me. And it was kind of an easy decision just because you do everything so well. I mean, you're you're almost leading in every single category along with that. Um, it's like the Tasmanian Devil. So shout out to AC Milan, you guys for doing so well. I am crying a little bit because I didn't have you. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the one stat. Me, oh, go ahead. With uh, with Darcy, because uh, you know uh, we had a lot of C- uh, DMs that had very similar stats. So like, what do you, you know? I'm sitting there thinking, what do you do to distinguish between them? And um, you know, uh, through some recommendations from some of the managers last season, we did the. Uh, the manager questionnaires and Dorsey's name kept popping up from many opposing managers as ruined their day or made a last minute clear, or they wouldn't have, they would have, you know, won if it wouldn't have been for Dorsey, you know? And, um, I, I, you know, there were maybe one or two players besides Dorsey that had that going on in those manager questionnaires. And, uh, you know, to me that, that speaks volumes for a player, not just your stats or how your manager thinks of you. It's what the other managers are saying about you, you know? So that was, that was a a scale tipper for me. Yeah. Speaking on behalf of one of those managers, um, I always hated playing against Dorsey anyway, but this season, for some reason, he decided to score um, against us, which is most irritating, especially on a near post header. Um, so he's all over the place. Well deserved. Uh, can't speak highly enough about your play and and you earning the spot. I think I scored in the cup too, didn't I? Yeah, you. Yeah, you did. I wasn't going to say anything, but uh. <laughs> you guys. All right. Well, playing next to Dorsey in this three-five-two is going to be someone who is not unfamiliar to team of the season. It is Jamie uh, over at Inter Milan, joining with that. Uh, Great defense and back line that they have over there. 35 games played, 108 interceptions, 69 defensive tackles, uh, 162 possessions won, and 88 passing points. Very similar stats to Dorsey, uh, so it's not a surprise to see them playing next to each other. Legend. What do you guys think about how the season he had? Uh, if you don't mind, uh, I'm going to chime in here first. Um... Jamie's man, Jamie's a, such a good player. Um some guys had some um arguments to be in the starting eleven other than Jamie, I do their statistics, but all it takes is the eye test. If you play against this guy, um you'll understand what it's all about. Um he just keeps the ball moving. Um rarely gets caught on the ball, rarely misplaces a pass. He's just he's everywhere he needs to be and um Really difficult to play against, and he really keeps that Air Milan side ticking. Um, they have an awesome defense, and they play a really possession-style game, and uh, he's the main cog in that wheel. Yeah, I think Did similar... Did you just call him a cog? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I'll, yeah, I'll say as, as a DM, I, I don't play... We play a little bit different styles. He's not as aggressive, but... Um, he he's so good at keeping the ball too, and and progressing it, and keeping that offense moving in that inter system. It's a more possession based, and but he still led the league in clean sheets, had the best goals per game in terms of DMs. Very good possessions, one to possession loss. He didn't win the ball as much as a couple other DMs, but that's also because their team that keeps the ball a little bit more than other people. Um, but I think you saw 
I don't think that team finishes top six and qualifies for the Super Cup, which they ended up winning if he's not, you know, a mainstay in that team in midfield. And, you know, I don't model my game after him because I have a different style, but he's someone who I'd like to incorporate things that he does more into my own personal game just because of how good he is in some areas. Yeah, I don't think anybody in the league has the quality that Jamie has at at finding that luring dribble and then driving the ball with an X uh, to the outside mid or to to a, a wide striker. Um, and just, I mean, he did it last night for an assist. It, it, it's his staple move. You know, it's like a Steven Gerrard type thing with a Hollywood ball to the outside, except for he finds somebody in space that can actually be a threat. So, um, I mean, Jamie is one of my favorite players in the league and has constantly been a top two or three DM, if not the best DM in the league for three or four seasons. And he, he just, he proved it again this season. All right. Well, we will move on to the outside mid edition of this starting lineup. And the right mid comes from none other than the champions Benfica. It is classy. 30 games played, 7 assists, 19 key passes, also 143 possessions won. So one of those rare right mids, if you ask me, that both contribute on offense but also play extremely well on defense. Uh, what else stood out from his play that from you guys? Ball progression. That Benfica team relies on playing awesome defense and – creating chances that seemingly come from nothing. Um, and they've got a team full of really, really awesome players. And it's really hard to stand out. And Classy always stands out, whether it's right mid or DM. Uh, you always know when he's there. Um, he's been playing with this group of players for quite some time now. Um, and he had a really good season last season also. Um, so I'm not surprised to see him out here um, as a right mid, as they had some extra cover uh, DM this season. So shout out to Classy. You know, another another one of Classy's stats that didn't didn't make it on there is his interceptions. He had 83 on the season, and you know, um, Benfica one of their greatest improvements this season over last season was that they started scoring a lot of goals. In my opinion, you know, uh, a lot of people said that you know it was like, there was a stat last season where it was a ton of one nothing games, two nothing games. Well, I can tell you from my own experience playing Benfica this season was they were putting up sometimes three or four goals and um you know to have an outside mid as well as dm he did play some dm to be able to be so good on both sides of the ball uh his talent on the ball is probably one of the best players in the league in my opinion and then to be able to be just as good on defense and contribute with seven assists and 19 key passes you know that's a that's an all-around player right there that any team would love to have. Yep. I think so the the kind of the main right bid candidates all had fairly similar goals and assist tallies. Um a couple of them had a little few more key passes, but um where Classy really stood out was his possessions won, possessions lost, his tackles, interceptions, all that. And I think in you know, it might change for next FIFA. Three five two might not be what most of the kind of teams in the top league or two play but as as of now the reason we have a 352 and the reason some teams play it is because you know it's it works and to make it work though you have to have those wide mids who can contribute to your attack like classy does but they have to be able to lock down that wing and do their job tracking back and even though he played maybe i think four or five games at dm he got most of those defensive stats playing right mid and he had 74 tackles as well as those 83 interceptions which is crazy for an outside mid in 30 games so I think he represents both the offensive and especially the defensive side, which is kind of what put him over the top for me and made him an easy, easy vote for me. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, that's what separates the the top teams that win championships from the mid table teams is is those outside mids and the three five two. Uh, you see a lot of teams with great strikers, great CBs, great goalkeepers, but how many teams have great outside mids? It's it's a rarity in this league. I think that's well said. Exactly. I think that's part of the reason they improved so much on the offensive end is contributions from players like Classy. Uh, joining Classy on the left mid side, opposite side, 
is none other than Mapes from Juventus. He had 32 games played, eight assists, 25 key passes, as well as 106 possessions won. So a little bit more contribution on the offensive end and a little less con contribution on the defensive end, but able to still sneak out that left mid starting spot. Uh, we're trying to get Mapes in here, but what stood out from your, your view from his statistics? I think well, Mapes, first of all, had 10 goals scored. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but that was, of all the outside mids, I think it was the most. Yeah. Uh, to go along with, with eight assists and 25 key passes from an outside mid, those are great offensive stats. You know, we were, and still to have 106 possessions won, um, that's you know, great all-around stats from an outside mid. Again, kind of like the same things we we're saying about Classy. Um, but, you know, uh, Juventus had a little bit of a different style uh, than Benfica, and he still managed to put up great stats from an outside mid. He was very consistent, uh, you know, 32 games in that lineup, which had a lot of players in, in the team and uh, did have some rotation going on. So It looks like we were able to get Mapes in. So, Mapes, congratulations on your team of the season. Yo, thanks, man. I uh, just want to shout out all the guys on Juve, Italiano, kind of letting me just do my thing. And, I mean, most importantly, just our strikers, guys that put the ball in the back of the net. Um, the camp, Goat, most of the time, was the one. Same with Mokro in the mid, finding me on the back post. Get it mad at uh, goals, kind of just a lot of headers actually, which is basically just kind of crossing your fingers and praying that they go in with that uh, winger build. Any questions for Mapes from our panelists? Yeah, so you mentioned Mokro and Goat and a couple others, and it, it seemed like there was definitely a, a bit of kind of switching. Goat seemed to play most of the season at Cam, but the other positions seemed to have a lot of rotation. So was it tough kind of dealing with like a, a changing lineup every game day or, and especially as a co-manager who kind of had to look through a lot at the end, like how, how did you balance, you know, getting the team in line and, and finding the right, right lineups with, you know, your own play and making sure you're doing your part on the field? Like in Juve in general, it's a lot of older guys. Um, and a lot of guys that are kind of like mountain time in Canada and stuff like that. So for Wednesdays, the schedule is definitely, it was kind of a toss up from week to week. There's obviously guys that were there every week. I mean, Messino was strike basically depending on the line. But I mean, my game style, I just try to keep it wide for the most part. I think a lot of the times, especially facing three backs, if you get past that outside mid, a lot of people, they don't show the same defensive effort. You know, they're not really box to box. They're more just kind of like hover in the mid or they kind of just, if they just that split second, they just kind of keep track. You could really kind of attack that, that wide spot. And then if you have a two strikers, we are always playing two strikers up front. Center backs kind of go narrow. And that's a, a lot of how I got open on the back post for the most part. Some of it is just kind of just luck, timing runs at the right time. But, I mean, for the most part, it's just kind of just picking your opportunities to, you know, kind of just see that spot in the box. Um, I know Dorsey has scored a header on you guys, top box. That's just pure luck, just making a run, just hoping someone crosses the ball to me. Stuff like that. I mean, it's really just kind of getting after it. All right. Well, I want to thank you, Mapes, for coming on here and talking about your season a little bit. Congratulations on getting in the starting lineup, let alone uh, making the team of the season. Both big accomplishments. Yeah, word up. Thanks a lot. Shout out Juve guys. Better and bigger things. Be Monte Calcio next season. and uh... <laughs> Yeah, we'll see how that all unfolds. Thanks, brother. Uh, we got to move on to the cam position. And the cam from the starting lineup also comes from AC Milan. It is A. Vols, another great season by the cam over there. 32 games played to go along with 14 assists, 46 key passes, as well as 88 possessions won and 71 passing points. Uh, so what what did you guys see? Dorsey, you play with A. Vols. You've probably seen them the most. 
what what is his game like and why do you think he's deserving of, of this team this season you know cam is just such it's such a hard position to play and I, I think what also makes it really hard is that it's hard to do it consistently and outside of a game day or two where i think he'd maybe admit he just didn't get it going every game day he was a threat and he was there in the middle when we needed him and he was making the runs like he also scored eight goals which he doesn't shoot much for him to score eight goals is pretty pretty damn impressive but he he absolutely killed it in terms of key passes and he doesn't even take most of our set pieces that's usually bad Studa. Um, so he's not getting the cheap corner hit the hit the guy on the top of the box key passes like he is playing those incisive passes, um, and he just yeah he just most uh, every single game day he was someone that we knew if we could find him in the ball he was gonna find someone in the middle or on the wing he was he was just kind of the fulcrum and when we missed him on the last couple Sundays we were able to get by and win the cup um, against Benfica but this last Sunday when we had about three or four people missing including him. I think we missed his absence the most. Um, he's just a very he, he's he's good on the ball. He knows how to pass. He knows how to dribble. He can he can shoot if he gets in the positions. Um, he just knows how to play the position and to to know how to do it and then also be able to execute it to get both those things. That's that's what kind of makes him stand out for me. One thing I noticed from 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 Vols, you know, just from playing against him and uh, you know playing DM is. He always finds a way to get on the ball. Uh, there's some cams, you know, uh, if the midfield gets real packed, you know, you can kind of take him out of the game. But he he always finds the space, and he gets rid of the ball so fast that um, it moves on to the next play, uh, which makes him very hard to defend. So, um, you know, it's it's he's a very smart player as well as talented, very deserving. All right. Well, if there's no further thoughts on A-Vol season, going to the strikers up top in this 3-5-2. We, all, of course, have two strikers, and the first striker is also coming from this AC Milan. The beneficiary of A-Vols is none other than ex-brother Louie, who had 37 goals and nine assists in 38 games played. This seems like a very clinical striker. I'm going to defer again to Dorsey. You've had the most time with him. You've seen him the most. Uh, what did you see from Brother Louie all game, all season? Um, he's just willing to, you know, especially this FIFA's has gotten more defensive and the goals have gone down. A lot of strikers are just, they're afraid to shoot and they're afraid to to take chances and, and do things that might make them, at least for a play, not look amazing. And he's willing to make those chances. And, you know, I don't know how many posts he hit this season, probably 10 to 15, especially that left post. He probably stole about five of my assists, but he even when he had his game or his moments where it didn't go in the net, he kept going. And I think that's what made him stand out. That's what got him the gold boot in the end was that he kept firing all season. And even when we had a striker shake up midseason and Eric came in and his striker partner, Batty, got moved to the wing, you know, he, he didn't really slow down, even though Eric never really scored a bunch. Eric basically ended up being the support striker and Louis kind of carried us there towards the end. And he scored some big goals and scored some, some goals in games where we couldn't, you know, maybe we were struggling on the whole and, but we were able to get him that one chance and he converted. And um, I don't, I wish they had some kind of game winning goal stat in FIFA in the future, because I have to think he had, would have been up there at the top of the league for that. Yeah, I'm happy to see uh, Louis have such a great season. You know, um, I managed uh, Atlanta in season 10, and uh, he started the season with me. And um, beginning of the season, we we had really big plans. Didn't go as planned. You know, we had we had we had some bumpy times, but um, seeing him bounce back and put such a great season together is a uh, is is great to see. Um, considering all the struggles that we went through that season, so. Um, Yep, congratulations, Louis. Yeah, to me, man, Louis just he's just so he's just always in the right place at the right time. And I love him as just as a striker in general, because I love a striker who knows how to kind of make those runs when he needs to and then also pull back. And I feel like he's just he's a mixture of both, which is why I make him such so good. And that's why he's he, you know, he, he did win golden boot. In addition to that, you know, the key passes and the uh, passing points along with the man of the matches kinda of stands out. Um 
it was a lot harder to pick. I know me personally to pick the starting uh, strikers in this one because there were so, so many good ones uh, this season. You know, as I know Dorsey already touched upon it earlier, it's like we're getting so many good players now that it's so hard to choose. Um, but obviously winning gold boot is, can't do anything other than help you. So congrats to Louie for that. Yeah, he had, a, he had a phenomenal season, and I think everyone's kind of touched on it already, that the 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 competition at the top of the striker list was fierce and deep, and it was definitely hard to decide. It, it, there was, in my opinion, at least six people that were in contention, and to these two players, the next one to be announced, they, they both had very great seasons, but all six of them really, in my, in my opinion, had great seasons, so there, there's... Too many players to narrow down to these four position in my uh, estimation. So congratulations to Brother Louis though, for having a great season, almost a goal a game to add to his nine assists. Um, playing up top of him is someone not from the top five teams, but someone who has been consistently one of the best strikers for a long time. And it's actually his – Retirement season. He's also our 99 player. It's none other than Lupe from PSG. 36 goals in 36 games to go along with four assists, 17 key passes, and 92 passing points, the most of any of the starters. And he played the striker position. Yeah, big shout out to Lupe. Um, this sounds like it is his retirement season. That's what Stay High has been saying. I haven't talked to him personally, um, but he's been here since season three i think four three or four i think four um the last couple seasons this fifa he hasn't been able to play as much he had to play some midfield stuff like that so he wasn't up there in the team season conversation but i think this is now his third team season honor and he just missed out on the golden boot um psg would have been relegated without Lupe on this team it's it's not even a if scenario it's a they end up i think with the fifth or sixth best offense in terms of goals for and he had like 60% of the goals. This team would have been 18th or 19th without him. He single-handedly brought them um, out of that relegation fight towards the end of the season. And he also did it while it's not like he just sat there and was losing the ball 12 times a game and couldn't complete a pass. I mean, he was, you know, he killed it in terms of passing points. He lost the ball pretty much the least of anyone in that group. Um, just, I mean, a lot of these guys put up less goals and had good seasons with much better overall lineups and teams around them that consistently fed them more chances and lupe did so much just single-handedly and i think for that reason like those the two strikers in here were the two people i voted for the starters and it wasn't an easy choice for the most part but for me lupe was uh, the season he had he did it the whole season too he was up at the top of the chart so just big shout out to someone who's been in the league for so long who's done it for so long and has you know shown that the old guys still got it You can't you can't ignore the fact that a guy that played in the fifteenth place team scored thirty six goals in thirty six games. You just you can't ignore that. Um, there are some really great considerations we have for striker this season. Um, a lot of guys deserved it. Um, that's the case for every position we've listed so far. But man, I, I don't know if anyone deserved it more than Lupe. All right. Well, with that being said, we need to move on to the bench. Um, congratulations to all of our starters and the bench are all at once. So I'm just going to have to, and we will kind of discuss them and hopefully have a few of those players in here. Um, but we'll start from goalkeeper, work our way to striker. It starts with strikers 98, then the taco kid 95 badger at left back crack at CDM left mid is criminal Casper strikers up top are chronic and spicy beetle. So, of those, who do you guys think really stood out to you? Crack for me. Like, as a CDM, I mean, I think it was so hard choosing between whether or not he started and made the starting 11 for me. It was super, super difficult and super, super hard just because he was so well, low versus and everything. But, you know, other points were brought up, which, I mean, he was going to get team of the season regardless. But crack for me, man, he's just... And having the and I played with him at, uh, in Bosnia for the World Cup too. Um, he's just he's so he's like everything I want out of a CDM. Um, he's very patient on the ball. It's it's almost like a mixture of Jamie and Dorsey, um, but not not as aggressive though. Um, 
to me, crack, but that's just for me. And then shout out to Badger, too. He did make team of the season. Uh, Spurs player, um, especially after Veron leaving and APOC leaving, um, say he still held it down, helped us out a lot. Um, switched from left back to CB when we needed him. So shout out to him. Yeah, I think I'd be remiss if we don't bring up how deep <clears throat> the striker position is when you have a guy like Chronic who plays all 38 games, scores 26 goals, and then leads the league in assists with 20, and he doesn't crack the starting 11. I mean, that's, that is a, an insane amount of goal production for a player, and, and for him to be uh, on the bench just tells you how, how, how good the quality was for the, for the striking core this, this time around. So if, you know, for those who were omitted from the starting uh, and even the bench, um, you know, just look at those numbers uh, for the strikers here and and be in awe at, at how great they are. You know, for yeah. me, it was um, it was the Taco Kid. Um, you know, he he was the the anchor CB that gets so talked about that doesn't get the stats of the outside backs because they're usually the ones doing the sweeping, not doing the stepping. And he still was the anchor on the the. The, t- the team that won the championship and, you know, arguably the best defense in the last two seasons in PCN. And to step in for Perps, who was so great last season and, and set records, um, you know, a lot of people could have cracked under that pressure. But uh, he stepped in there, took it on his shoulders, and put together a great season. And you know, being the anchor CB still had 54 interceptions and 94 possessions won, which is great. And to get three man of the matches in a squad like Benfica, where I'm sure every day somebody showed up and put it in a performance, uh, is a great number as well. So, you know, Taco was the big one for me. Yeah, I think I, I got to give a special shout out to Spicy. Um <laughs> He's he's pretty much been a left mid left winger his whole career, and he's played some cam I think a little bit this FIFA. He's kind of moved in there, um, but he moved he made the move to a striker. I think he played a little bit at the end of last season, but he made the f- move full up, and it was really really tight for that last spot. Spicy did get it at the end, and just for someone who's been in the league since season one, and you know, I think this is second or third team of season, he helped lots to that top four finish. He and Kev had a had a great partnership up top and just that's not easy to do, you know, be a be one, one position for so long and transition. And, you know, what I heard from Lazio all season was that he was just, you know, he was such, he and Kev both scored the goals, but he was just such a, a critical piece of the, the creative part of their game. And um, it's just not an easy thing to do to, to kind of make that transition. No, he's not. And I can, I mean, I can personally attest to, uh, Playing with him on Lazio this season, there there were games where you, you have those moments in the game and you're just waiting for somebody to step up, grab the game by the by the shirt, and just take over. And I saw Spicy do that on a number of occasions. It was uh, very impressive to see. Um, I'm going to take a moment. Uh, I got a message from Badger. He said he wished he could be here to talk about how he earned his first tots, but... Uh... He's unfortunately able to make it. Uh, he said he just wants so bad to sell him, but he wants to thank everyone for the team this season. He came into the season proving himself and putting himself out there as a top defender. And shout out to other fullbacks in the league. And thank you to everyone who voted for him and his teammates for the season. Yeah, he's the only fullback to make it. And to, in order to be a fullback and make it on this, you got to really stand out because <clears throat> the people that do play fullbacks, there, there is a competition there. And it's kind of a dying breed in this FIFA. Hopefully, maybe next FIFA it'll come back a little bit more. But congrats to him for being the only one out there. Yeah. And then uh, ahead of him, uh, Criminal Casper, I've, I've heard from some Chelsea guys that um, he really kind of carried that offense at times. Because that was a team that didn't score a whole bunch for being in the top six race pretty much the entire season. And he did finish with five goals and 11 assists, almost pretty much about a goal every other game contributed to. And I was, it was really close for me between all the left mid, like he, Shmurda, which we'll get to, and, and Mapes are all super close. Um, so to shout out to all three of them and Casper, especially for, for doing his part and helping keeping that Chelsea top six stream alive all season. Yeah. I mean, as far as bench spots go, 
I'd be remiss if I didn't shout out strikers. Uh, I know he's got the Benfica defense in front of him. He's got the Taco Kid and his other contributors between Perps and um, Soccer Joe. Uh, but I did the math on this, and he had 6.7 saves per goal allowed. Like, that's a ridiculous amount. And you, you don't know as a voter, you know, how many of those saves were easy catches or, or whatnot. You don't know the difficulty of them. Didn't have as many saves as, as the starter did, Phil. Um, but still, 6.7 saves per goals allowed is, is a ridiculous number. And I think he had a, a really great season. Had he not missed the first few game days because of his Discord actions, like if he could just keep his mouth shut a little bit, he would have had, you know, a phenomenal 38 game season and probably given Phil an even better run for the money, if not taking it from him. So uh, just clean up your language, strikers. Please do it for me. Any final thoughts on these bench spots? Um, I wish we could have put more. You yeah, know, I know yeah. uh, there are people out there calling snub, calling, you know, bias voting. You know, uh, I w- you're wrong. <laughs> you know, we yeah. we we try to do our best. Uh, we we even uh, incorporated manager uh, feedback this season. Thank you all the managers that turned it in. It was really helpful, and um. You know, if if we would have put some of the people you're claiming snub in, then other people would be claiming snub. So, yeah, no matter what you do in these types of things, someone's going to get left out. Uh, and that's just the nature of the beast. But since you mentioned people that, that got snub, that um, we have two groups, really. One is the close but no cigar. And these players were ones that we had to discuss a lot about. It wasn't an easy call. You had to take a deeper look. You had to look at stats. You had to look at manager reviews. You had to look at everything to try and figure out the difference between these players and the people that made the team of the season. Um, But that list includes, in net, APOC from Tottenham slash Atlanta, old Mr. Peanut from AC Milan, CDM CM9 from Chelsea, Strikers up top, we had Liverpool Mad Kev from Lazio, as well as FIFA Talentless um, from Liverpool slash Atlanta. Uh, so those five players, you know, we really had to talk about a lot between their, the people who actually made it um, and the people that uh, obviously they ended up on the, on the wrong side of that discussion. But it, it was very close to the point where it had to be discussed. Um, and then the second group is the group that we called also receiving votes. Um, people that were nominated uh, but didn't quite have enough to crack the uh, discussion to make it a, a long um, discussion. But there's a lot of CVs on this list, so bear with me. There's Alex Madrid from Lazio, Austin from AC Milan, AO JCC from Tottenham, Bad Vado from Lazio, Maddie Dot from Atlantis, for Atlanta, <laughs> Nasty from Villarreal. CDMs, we had Darcy from Lazio and 5'6 Poppy from Benfica. The CM, we had Platypus Thrust from Tottenham. Cams, we had Versatile Goat from Juventus and Goatless from Atlanta. Outside mids, we had Zjig from Leverkusen slash Inter. Makino from Atlanta. Polo from Atlanta. And then up top, we had Stone from Benfica as well as Kufaveli from Inter. So <laughs> you could tell how many people had great stats by the, the amount of people that received votes. Like it's not an easy thing to decipher all these stats and you have to try and figure out what stats differentiate, you know, one player from another and what you know about the league. And I, there's no perfect process. It takes a lot of um, examination and it takes a lot of discussion as well. So anybody who made this list and there's, I'm sure there's people that we were leaving off um, had great seasons and were worthy of praise. And that's why we, Wanted to mention them here tonight. Yeah. Just if you didn't make it and you were close, like I can't obviously dictate your attitude on this, but I would say like, there's no reason to get upset and feel like you just got biased, like people were biased against you and stuff, because that's just not what it was. Like we had 
several rounds of voting at some positions, you know, people going back and forth, giving the reasoning for this and that. Um, and if you were the fifth best striker or the fifth best center back or the third best keeper, whatever it was, like, you know, two, three, four seasons ago, you probably would have been a shoe in for the team. It's just, it's that competitive now. And, you know, it doesn't take away from what you did this season and doesn't take away what you did to impact your team. And, you know, people who played against you, they knew that you were a tough opponent. So it, if you did miss out, you know, it, and, but you came close, like that's still a big accomplishment, I think. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, for me, when, when you're picking team of the season, uh, because say Spicy's on the bench and Lupe's on the striker on the starting, or you know, I'm in no way saying Lu- who's better than who. You know, we we're 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 going down a list, and you know, we're looking at a combination of a lot of things, and every single one of us has a different uh, opinion on these things. You know, we use PER to base it, and then that's why we vote. You know, everybody that everybody that's screaming they got snubbed got a vote. So it's not like you guys weren't in the in the discussion or there was a plot against you. So you know that I, it's important to know that like you all have fans. You know, it's not it's not like some of the chat that I'm missing. Yeah, and I think it's worthy of mentioning that there are 20 teams in Super League. And most positions have multiple players at the position. So the competition um, across the, the 20 teams, you know, at striker, you're, you're looking at at least 40 people that, that are competing for that. Um, so th- there's just a lot of competition. And to be in the top five, top six is, in my opinion, a pretty good honor. Um, you didn't make the team of the season this time, but you still showed out enough where you were considered. And I think that's huge. Yeah, and it's just hard to pick people, you know, in general, because it comes off if we're playing favorites. Because if you look, you see a few AC Milan guys and Inter guys and everything else, but it's really not this easy to pick these people. Like, if we could show you guys these stats, people, we were literally arguing over certain people and getting other people in and so on and so forth. So, I mean, if you feel like you get you got snubbed, I mean, it's hard to feel like that. Majority of you guys, I mean, if you at least top five, top six, you got votes. And it wasn't an easy decision. I know just personally for me, um, even having Badger on the bench, one of the things I complained about, like we need to stop focusing so much on a 3-5-2. But at the same time, it is what it is. Like if you made it, you deserved it. And it wasn't, it was a hard, um, it was a hard decision is what I meant to say for everybody. So congrats to everyone that made it. Um, and that's realistically about it. And then if you didn't, sorry, we love you. Hearts. PC and hearts, we can send them to you if you want. Yeah, and so I mean, just a few things. Like though the award season isn't quite over yet. Uh, player of the season voting will be going up. I think I'm gonna try to have it go up tonight at midnight. Um, and so there will be some players who did not make team of the season that will be in those votes. And we're also um, introducing a few new awards, so you will see those. Um, so look forward to that. And then also this Sunday. We're going to be having our uh, annual PCN All Star game. So, going to change it up a little bit this season. Um, I think we are going to do, we're going to have four teams, and it's going to kind of be a combination of all the teams this season. And there's going to be four captains drafting players from Super League, League One, League Two tots. You're going to kind of build out your team, and we're going to have on Sunday night, we're going to have two two-legged semis um, between the teams, kind of randomize how we pick that. And then the winners of those two-leggeds will play each other in a final final. We'll kind of we'll figure out the team names and things like that. And if we have to fill in a couple players, um, we'll, we'll figure out that exactly. And we'll have more information on that, I think, tomorrow uh, in, the, in the Discord. But uh, look forward to that on Sunday. So if you're a Super League League 1 or League 2 team of season player, uh, we'll probably be adding you to a chat and seeing if you can make it on Sunday. And if you're not, then hopefully you can join us and watch that on Sunday. Yep. Um, should be fun. I played in the, last, in the one last season, so um, it was fun. So shout out to everybody that made it. Other than that, good luck to everyone. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us. I want to thank everyone for joining into the last podcast. 
of the season 11. I appreciate everyone. I, and congratulations again to everyone on the team this season and also the people that uh, made the shortlist. It's still an accomplishment. You guys are top 10 in your in your position and uh, that that is worth mentioning. So thanks to all the panelists. Thanks for the people who joined in. Y'all have a good night and we'll see you soon.